spectrophotometry, which is measuring how light interacts with a sample, is one of the most powerful tools available for chemical analysis. A spectrophotometer measures how much light is absorbed by a sample at a given frequency of light. This video talks about using a Spectronic 20, which operates in the visible portion of the spectrum. Instrumental analysis can analyze samples if there's some property of the sample that can be measured quickly and reliably by machine. For spectrophotometers, that's how much light a sample absorbs, how intensely colored the sample is. A Spectronic 20 instrument operates at a single wavelength of light at a time, which the operator can set. If you're analyzing a sample and the substance you're interested in can be treated chemically so that it is colored, or alternatively if the substance is already colored, then spectrophotometry is a quick and sensitive means of determining how much of that substance is present. Now we're going to move to the board and I'll talk about Beer's Law. Beer's Law covers absorbance of light by colored species. The statement of Beer's law is, very simple, A equals epsilon BC. A is the absorbance of the sample. That's how much light is absorbed. Epsilon is a constant. And it's a constant that is a function of the species that is absorbing and the wavelength of the light that is being used. Other than that, it doesn't change. B is path length. So if you're using a fat cell, it's going to absorb more light than just a thin one. And C is concentration. Concentration of the colored species. What this means is that if you are using a constant colored species, that if you're not changing your species, and if the path length is the same, then these two items are constant, and A, absorbance, becomes a direct function of concentration. It means that the higher the concentration, the more light is absorbed. That's pretty intuitive. Something that's more concentrated is going to be darker. So you, the analyst, make several solutions where you know the concentration of the chemicals you're interested in. That's the analyte. And those known solutions are called calibration solutions. And then you measure the absorbance of the solution, and you can plot a graph of A, absorbance, as a function of concentration. It'll look something like this, with absorbance and concentration on the bottom. The independent variable and absorbance is dependent. And you measure several solutions. And as you can see, we're going to get a curve here. Beer's law says that this will be a straight line. It's y equals mx plus b. And the slope will be epsilon b. Now, the first part of this line is indeed a straight line. But after that, it starts to flatten out. That frequently happens at higher concentration. It means that Beer's law is not strictly being observed, but it, you've still got a calibration curve. And if you can draw this, you can use the data even in the curved portion. However, if you want to use a mathematical relation of Beer's law, A equals epsilon BC, you can only use the straight line portion of the curve. Once you have a calibration curve and you've got another solution, if you can measure the absorbance of that, let's say you measured it here, you read the concentration of the calibration curve, and it would be that concentration there. All of this holds at a constant wavelength. Because the absorbance varies as a function of lambda, the wavelength, the measurement should be made at the optimum wavelength. And usually, the, that's the wavelength where absorbance is highest. We call that lambda max. Because at that wavelength, the absorbance is going to be most sensitive to a change in concentration. Sometimes we'll give you that information, and sometimes you'll have to run a spectrum. That means measure the absorbance as a function of wavelength, and and then choose the appropriate wavelength for your analysis. Let me give you a sketch of that now. Here, instead, we've got absorbance as a function of wavelength. And we could start at, let's say, 400 nanometers and move up to 600. I'm just pulling those numbers out of the air. But you may get something that looks like that, where the 
colored species absorbs lots of light at around about 450 and not very much around about 520. So in this case, lambda max is here. And that would be the wavelength you would use for your investigation. The Spectronic 20 is a real workhorse. At one point, not counting balances, there were more spec 20s than any other analytical instrument in the world. It's simple and it's rugged, and this lab has quite a number of spec 20s, which means there's enough for you to be working with it at your workstation. Here's how they work. Here is a schematic of a Spectronic 20. We have a light source, and for most of what you're going to be using, it'll be, it's a tungsten filament bulb. It emits white light, that's light of many uh, wavelengths. There's also a deuterium discharge tube in there for ultraviolet work. We won't be using that in this lab. But it is emitting light of many wavelengths, as you can see here. The next device it goes into is a monochromator. You set the wavelength that you actually want. And so you're only going to get one frequency of light. I've represented it by green here. It then passes through the sample, which may or may not absorb it and you will get light coming through to the detector. Now, first of all, you put a blank solution in there. That is something that is not going to absorb any light at all. And so all of the light passes through. And you adjust the detector to say this is 100% of the light coming through or zero absorbance. Then you can put your sample in. And I'll color this. So we've now got a sample in place and that will absorb some light and you're going to get slightly less light going through and the detector will tell you how much of that light has been absorbed. This is a Spectronic 20 instrument. Um, there is a sample compartment right here. There are controls on the front and a filter control here. This is where you set the wavelength. The rest of the controls are up here, and the output is right here up top. Now, first of all, the compartment, sample compartment has a lid, and uh, you'll be placing your sample in there. The left knob is how you turn it on. We've actually got this one plugged in, but it's a click turn on and off once it has been plugged in. And the right knob is used for setting 100% transmittance, same thing as zero absorbance you set the wavelength here. Now, there is a filter here which changes. This one runs from 340 to 599 nanometers and then from 600 to 950. So if you change the wavelength across that boundary, you need to make sure that you've got the right setting for the filter. We have some blue calibration solutions of different uh, concentrations. And here we have some solution in a sample cell or cuvette. As you look at the cuvette, there are uh, things that distinguish it from a test tube. It's got a white uh, disc on it. You can actually write a sample number. It's also got a white line, and we'll use that for alignment. The first thing you should do is plug in your Spec 20. Let it sit for about five minutes if the lamp is cold. Um, if you're just getting it from somebody else, the lamp will be warm. But the longer it sits, the happier it's going to be. Set the lambda max here on the top knob. We have set this one to 400 nanometers. And the first thing we do is turn this, the, adjust the mode switch to transmittance. And we need to adjust this to zero. There, when there is no sample in the compartment, there is a shutter in the light path. And so there's no light getting through. We've got the mode selector here, pushed until it's on percent transmittance. No light equals zero transmittance. So we adjust this knob until we get zero as a reading. There we go. Sometimes you'll overshoot, but that's OK. Bingo. The flashing negative sign means we're quite close. All right, now we take we, a blank solution <coughs> and we put it in. Now, here you need to be careful. Notice we do have a line here, and there's a line on the front here. 
and you need to align them so that you are sure that the that the cell, the cuvette, is always in the same position. If it's not completely round, you might be introducing some errors. But if you always have the white line directly at the front, you will be in the same alignment. Once that is done, you, if you listen, you can hear the shutter going up and down. Close the lid so there isn't any spare light. And at this point, we've got 100% of the light going through. So we use the right-hand knob, which is actually labeled 100%, and adjust this so that we get 100% transmittance. <clears throat> there we go, we're almost there. Oops, gone a bit far. Got it. Right, and now we read the sample. We're not interested in percent transmittance. Push the mode switch until the light comes up next to absorbance and put my colored sample in. At this point, when it settles down at 400 nanometers or 399, it's drifted a bit, 0.218 absorbance. This is the number to write down. Once you have chosen lambda max, and I think we will actually leave it at 410, you are now ready to construct a calibration curve and read your known and your unknown solutions. Now, this part of the experiment is quite quick. It's a good idea to have all of your solutions ready to go, and then you can read them in rapid succession, bang, bang, bang. Now, for this part of the species, we decided lambda max is 410 nanometers. So set your, your monochromator to that and <clears throat> Again, check that you've got the right filter setting. We're between 340 and 599, so that is correct. And from this point on, you need to use just one cuvette to minimize any kind of differences between different vessels, minimize the inconsistency. First thing to do is take a cuvette with a blank in it, pop it in, and set you can either set zero absorbance, they both work, or you can turn to percent transmittance and set it as 100%. Okay, we've now got zero absorbance. At this point, dump the water and take the first solution we have and rinse the tube. You've got lots of solution usually. And then fill it as long as you're up to the bottom of the disc, you'll be all right. Put the lid back on and read. And so my first sample, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 5th molar, has an absorbance of 0 0.009. Moving along, we dump that and take the next solution. And again, rinse it with the actual measurement solution. You've got quite a lot of it. And pop it in, align it, and read again. And 2 times 10 to the minus 5th molar is a reading of 0 0.030. So these solutions will all increase. We can keep on reading for all of these <coughs> darker colored solutions and then draw the uh, calibration curve. I've now got my sample solution to read. This is my unknown. I have no idea what this concentration is. And again, rinse it out, pouring it into a waste beaker, which you can then dispose of later. and aligning it properly, pop it in, close the lid, and my unknown solution has an absorbance of 0.162. Once I have drawn my calibration curve, I can use the calibration curve to translate 0.162 into concentration. Now, once you've read all of your solutions, remove the cuvette, wa dump it off, wash it all out, Turn the Spectronic 20 off, unplug it, and return it. 
few last pieces of information. When there is nothing in the sample compartment and there's a shutter across there, if you're in absorbance mode, it flashes 1999. That's as close as it can get to two, and the flashing means I'm not seeing any light. Uh, that's all that that number means. If you turn the percent transmittance, you get unstable number. The other thing to point out is we have printed instructions. When all else fails, read the instructions. If you can't remember what I've said, this will always be available to you. In conclusion, spectrophotometry is a powerful tool that can be used to determine the concentration of a colored species in a sample. You should now understand how to use a Spectronic 20 to analyze colored solutions.